So here's a picture I drew quite a while back, brothers and sisters, but thought it would be fitting to put Sanji in here, considering even with a broken spine, the boy's got a lot of gumption and he just keeps coming at you and coming at you until Dr. Kareha says, sit the fuck down, Sanji. One Piece, chapter 148, Unbreakable. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on uh, the epic and awesome and uh, really heartfelt tale of One Piece. Our last chapter saw us with, uh, of course, it, well, really at the end of it, it was uh, Luffy standing tall uh, atop uh, Wapple's former castle. With the uh, He had uh, placed the, the flag back up there, the uh, skull and crossbones with the uh, cherry blossoms, the, um, the, the symbol of, of Dr. Hiraluk. Uh, that uh, of course uh, Kareha and Tony Tony Chopper had put uh, had put up there. So um, it had been knocked down during the battle, shot down by Wapo, and Luffy saw that it was something that it was important uh, to Chopper, and then also too him being a pirate himself believes in, in what the pirate flag stands for and the skull and crossbones and everything else. And and really that's kind of what a symbol of this whole chapter is. It was really really I, I think a very good chapter. So. That's where things left off. Uh, this one begins back at the bottom of the mountain. Uh, if you remember in the last chapter, uh, Dalton had been, you know, finally kind of come to and, and helped by the doctors, uh, by the Ishii 20, and, uh, and had insisted upon going to join the battle or whatever is taking place up there at the top of the, the mountain. And... Um, so anyway, so Usopp had, uh, you know, had said, I'll carry you, you know, and uh, <laughs> so that's how this one starts out. And he's like, I'll carry you to the top of the mountain, right? That, that's where we're going, up to the top of the mountain. <laughs> and Zoro's just looking on it, I'm like, uh, you fool. Usopp's got a lot of heart, but ultimately Dalton is, you know, three, four times the size of him. Usopp does not have any type of superhuman strength or anything like that, and he's not going to carry him 15,000 feet up this mountain, right? So, uh, so Zoro goes and just scoops him up and throws him over his shoulder like he's nothing, like a sack of potatoes, man. And he's just like, all right, yeah, up that mountain, right? <laughs> and he starts walking. And the villagers go and uh, they stop him and they say, hey, listen, listen, just stop for a second. If you're insistent upon getting up there, just give us 30 minutes and we'll fix one of the, the lifts for you. And you can, um, you know, the rope lifts that they used uh, that were similar to like ski lifts or like cable cars. And then you can get up there much easier. And, uh, and Zero says, yeah, but all the lifts were, you know, were disabled or all the lifts are down. You know, all, there's, there's no ropes going up there. And they said, yeah, actually, what we did is we, we cut them all but one, uh, the, a white rope, right, so it would blend in with the background and the snow uh, that's going into the uh, uh, Gaiahe or Giraha, whatever the name of the, the village is that, uh, that Kareha was supposed to be going to and that, uh, that Usopp and Vivi were actually on their way to. So, uh, so obviously they kept that for like emergencies and then they just need to hook up a car to it or, or whatever, which is kind of cool and, and definitely a good thought. So, um, so we go and we, we kind of are left with that, like they're going to be on their way up there. And then the rest of the chapter takes place up on the top of the mountain. Um, Luffy, of course, you know, is still standing, you know, up and standing by the flag, pretty much in front of the flag. And he goes and, and explains that, uh, well, well, Wapple, first of all, starts just going and shooting off his big ass mouth as usual, you know. Oh, and you can't keep it up there. I'll just shoot it down every time you do blah, blah, blah. That's nothing. That's, uh, you know, and, and he's, uh, he's, he's trivializing what it is and what it stands for. And this is where you see Luffy go and take a stand and he says, you know, and he tells him that the, 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 the pirate flag, it's a sign of, it's, it's, you have to have faith. And it's a sign of strength, and, it's a, and it means something. You know, the skull and crossbones are not to be taken lightly. And this is, of course, too kind of a crack at Wapple because he pretended to be a pirate for a number of months when he escaped his own country from Blackbeard and, and was out at sea. So that's kind of what I took from it, you know, is it's Luffy, you know, telling him that, listen, this stands for more than you'll ever be. So he goes and Wapple just kind of, you know, taunts him again and just goes, boom. and remember he's still the Wapple house. And uh, he goes and, and fires the cannon that he's got at, uh, at at Luffy and the flag. And he's like, ah, ha, ha, and you see this explosion. He's like, he was blown to smithereens, you know. And it's kind of cool, man. I actually should probably draw this because it's just a real cool uh, picture of Luffy afterwards. And, and he uses, oh, he uses the hash marks he used to symbolize that Luffy's just kind of like burnt and beaten up, you know, so to speak. And he's just standing there and he's still got the flag, you know, he's still holding his hand on the flagpole that's behind him. And he's, and, and Luffy tells him, he says, see, 
you know, this is a sign, you know, that this is a sign of strength and faith, you know, and that, that they have faith in something and, uh, and that it meant something. And it's kind of cool because as this is going on, Chopper goes and, and looks up at him and he's just like, man, he's like, this is what a pirate is. And then he goes and he has this uh, flashback, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kira look and, and what he told him about pirates and about going and discovering the world someday that you'll find out that, that you know, where you're at right now is so you're just a... Uh, you know, you're, you're basically you're a, a big fish in a, in a small pond, or or they say it, a small fish in a big pond. I forget what, exactly what they say, but basically that there's a huge, huge world out there, you know, to discover. And uh, and then he goes, and he's just like awesome. So he's looking at Luffy in awe, you know, and um, and then it's very funny because he goes, he says, "I'll just shoot down every time you you go and put it back up there." And he goes and gets ready to fire again. And then Sanji goes, and Sanji's like, that's it, enough of this. So he goes to come at him, and he's going to nail him, you know, he's going to kick him. And Kareha's like, ah, you know, that fool, he's got a broken spine, you know, because if you remember, <laughs> Sanji had this broken or cracked spine, and uh, and he he's not up to 100%, you know. She says he's got a lot of heart, but he's going to wind up killing himself. So right as he's about to come in there and nail him, Kareha goes and tackles his ass, right? And she's like, doctor, stop, <laughs> and slams him down. And he's like, what are you doing, you old bat? <laughs> he wants to join the fight. And she's trying desperately to explain to him that you, know, you keep this up and you're going to wind up being paralyzed, you idiot. You know, so it's uh, it, it really kind of a funny exchange how that happens there. Uh, Tony, Tony Chopper though, then he goes and, and hulks up and he's going to you know he's going to come at uh, he's going to come at Wapo at, at some point here during this fight, and he goes to come at him and, and he's blocked by uh, you know Kira Marimo, and uh, you're not going to hit King Wapo and that, that sort of thing. And um, it's kind of funny because we wind up getting. Uh, Kira Marimo, and this is the whole theme and theory running throughout this, is of course just being being a person who's not accepted, uh, being or a person, a creature, or whatever who's not accepted, okay, by by anyone. And Chopper, of course, you know, loving Doctor Hero look because he was the only person that ever showed him kindness and compassion and love, and then of course that loss that came with it, with with him dying. Uh, now Chopper, and then this is so this is very much a story about being accepted and acceptance. And Chopper goes in and, and Kira Marimo says, oh, geez, and, you know, you're like an abominable snowman. I don't know. You're kind of a weird creature. I don't know how you can shrink and get and big and small and all that type of stuff. He's, you know, more or less making fun of him, his appearance, his power, everything. And uh, he says, boy, you must have not had any friends and must have been hated and all this sort of stuff, just kind of trying to pour salt in the wound. And Chopper says, you know, that, that, may, be, that may be right. I may not have had any friends and this and that, um, you know, but but Dr. Hero look, of course, you know, I, I loved him and... Um, and he says, you know what? And the thing about it is, is that uh, Doctor Hiraluk may have forgiven you for you, you know, making fun of him and uh, you know, and, and his intentions and everything else. But I won't, you know. And then he comes at him. But it's kind of neat how the whole monologue and speech sort of goes uh, back and forth between them, and then Chopper talking about how I may not have any friends because then right after that, Luffy goes and dives down from up atop the castle, right? And he's like. You have friends. I'm your friend, you know? And it's kind of touching and nice because you've seen time and time again how Luffy will just go to the ends of the earth and, you know, just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, you know, I mean, climb mountains, swim oceans. Well, he can't swim, but you know what I mean. You get the, you get the idea, uh, the analogies that I'm using. And you see that Luffy is just, uh, in my mind, in a lot of ways, a, a true hero, regardless of him being a pirate and the piracy and everything else. I mean, for him to go to come to Chopper's aid, like he doesn't know him. He doesn't really know his background, his past, doesn't know any of that stuff, right? It was all that was all told through a flashback, but it wasn't like Luffy was in on the flashback. So I thought it was really, you know, touching how he goes and, and comes flying down there, you know, just going going bad out of hell crazy. And uh, and you know, and he, he nails Wapple and but it's kinda cool, like I said, how he says that. He says, I'm your friend, you know. So he goes and kind of knocks them both back, you know, as he hits the ground. And and, uh, and Chopper says, are you okay, Straw Hat? And he says, yeah, it's fine. I'm made out of rubber. He's like, rubber? You know, so you can tell Chopper's intrigued, you know. And, and that just solidifies the fact that, that he's going to join up with the Straw Hats, uh, you know, come... Well, once we're done with this immediate mess over here and we move on to uh, to Alabasta. So um, I, I'm, I'm almost, you know, pretty much 100% sure on that one at this point. But uh, it is really kind of touching. And then we go and we have Luffy going. He says, hey, listen, can you take care of him? And he's talking about Kira Marimo, you know, the combination guy, you know, the one strapped to the other one. And he says, and uh, Chopper says, yeah, no problem, you know. And, uh, and then Luffy goes, yeah, because i got to take out this big idiot over here, you know. <laughs> so it was uh, it was pretty comical how everything worked out, just very funny, um, but also touching at the same time. And then you wind up getting, it's kind of cool because here at the end of the chapter, we get... Uh, 
we get, and I always forget the names of these moves over here. But then he goes and he, you know, he goes to go. Chopper goes to go, uh, go up here. We go if you can see that. Chopper goes to, um, you know, start engaging in a fight between Kira Marimo. And Kira Marimo's like, you can't beat me, you're nothing. You know, just the, the shit-talking part of the fight, right? And then he goes and he's just like, oh, yeah? And he goes and he pulls out his little antler, his little hoof over there, and he's got this little thing and he says, rumble ball. So don't know what the hell that does. I don't know if that is a little reindeer turd uh, that he pulled out of, you know, somewhere that's unmentionable right here. Or what the deal is, but that's obviously some sort of special move that he has, and we're going to see that one in the next chapter. So, uh, all in all, I definitely thought it was a very fun chapter. It was very touching, but at the same time, there was a lot of action, um, you know, a little bit of comedy in there. Because Wapple is just, he, he's just an idiot. I mean, really, truly is. I mean, he doesn't irritate me quite as much as like a Don Krieg did, or even like a, an Arlong. But he's just... Because he's such a moron, you know what I mean? He doesn't really have any any major strength, it seems like, at least not compared to, to Luffy and the gang. So um, he's never really been a, a major threat to me, you know what I mean? He got his, he got his ass wiped out in the middle of the sea, um, you know, 10, 15 chapters ago. And i just just not a, not a huge fan of the guy because of just the, his arrogance and the fact that he doesn't have anything to back it up. So uh, my chapter question, though, today is going to be... Um, as far as what the pirate flag symbolizes and everything else, because in the last chapter I really thought that it was Luffy um, seeing that it was important to Chopper to get that flag back up, but we see in this that it may have been a combination of that, but but it's also Luffy and what he stands for and what he believes the pirate flag stands for. So. Weigh in on that. Let me know what you think. You know, do you think that uh, what he did was more of a symbolism uh, of his own pride as a pirate, or that it was more of a kind act uh, to to go in and realizing that this was important to Chopper, whom whom he certainly wants to join his crew and, and be his doctor. Um, so there may have been a hidden motive there. But uh, leave your answers to that uh, question in the comments down below, brothers and sisters. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you think that I deserve it. And uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'll look forward to catching you in the next one, nation. As always, brothers and sisters, thank you for the comment and rate and like and subscribe and share and watching the videos and, and just being a part of the Nerd Nation. Here's a little picture of Zoro I recently drew for you, brothers and sisters.